hello hi everyone welcome back to our channel good morning good afternoon good evening i greet you all according to your time and locations you'll be watching this video yes my dear viewers i am back again with another update so guys i have a video here how like we all to watch but before then if you're meeting my channel for the very first time you're highly welcome please kindly do all to like share and subscribe leave your thought on the comment section let us know what you think about this video and i will see you towards the end in the lead up to the 2023 general elections nigerian citizens demonstrated a clear commitment to the democratic process that said the election exposed enduring systemic weaknesses and therefore signal a need for further legal and operational reforms to enhance transparency, inclusiveness and accountability. While we consider the electoral legal framework provides an adequate foundation for the conduct of democratic elections, there are ambiguities in the law. For example, the Electoral Act 2022, which had its first test in a general election in 2023 and other legal instruments evidenced gaps in terms of transparency, accountability and inclusivity and left room for uncertain implementation. For that reason, we recommend, and this is our first priority rec uh, recommendation, to protect the interests of voters through certainty of law for all stages and aspects of electoral processes by eliminating from electoral law and regulations errors and ambiguities to avoid potential for confusing interpretations and ensuring the revision processes are inclusive. A positive aspect of the voter registration process was active youth engagement, with two thirds of the nine and a half million new registrants being young people. However, there is a need for greater efforts to protect genuine youth participation in elections and similarly ongoing underrepresentation of marginalized groups in political life requires robust remedial action overall the collection of permanent voter cards was adversely affected by poor institutional planning and a lack of transparency to ensure the accuracy and inclusiveness of the voter register an external independent audit would be beneficial. <clears throat> the campaign was competitive with freedom of assembly largely respected as evidenced by the nationwide conduct of rallies. However, challenges such as the Naira cash and fuel scarcity and incidents of orchestrated violence were observed to hamper some campaign activities and to reduce attendance. In addition, the mission recorded cases of undue interference by governors, while the campaign was also marred by internal party conflicts. Personality-focused canvassing and misuses of incumbency by governors tilted the playing field, leading to increased polarization driven by divisive rhetoric based on ethnicity and religion. Candidates' prospects to meaningfully campaign also were negatively impacted by a high level of disputes resulting from candidate registration. The mission noted well over a thousand pre-election court cases, some negatively impacted are overlapped with the polls. Our mission recorded more than 100 campaign-related violent incidents, including tragically assassinations. These and other criminal acts obstructed the campaign disrupted the elections and suppressed voter participation. Weaknesses in the legal framework for these electoral offences and others such as misuse of state resources, intimidation and vote buying contributed to inadequate enforcement. Key state institutions, including INEC, but also political parties, failed to tackle these problems. Coming to our second priority recommendation, recommendation we consider there is a pressing need to address impunity for electoral offences through robust, well-defined and effective interagency coordination governed by clear rules on non-partisanship, optimization of resources, delivery of effective investigation and sanctioning, and provision of regular public consolidated information on outcomes. 
INEC introduced some very positive measures early in the electoral process. For example, it increased the number of polling units and established a system of electronic accreditation of party agents, media and observers. Public confidence, however, in INEC was severely damaged on the 25th of February due to its operational failures and lack of transparency. While some corrective measures introduced before the 18th of March elections seem to have a positive impact, overall trust was not restored and eventually led civil society to call for an independent audit of the entire process. However, there is no legal requirement for qualification and merit-based appointments of the positions of INEC Commissioner or Resident Electoral Commissioner. Prior to the elections, selection processes were questioned leaving the institution vulnerable to mistrust. We believe that these vulnerabilities can be effectively addressed by, and this is our third priority recommendation, establishing a robust operational framework for the independence, integrity, and efficiency of electoral administration through an inclusive and publicly accountable mechanism for selecting candidates to the posts of INEC commissioners and RECs based on clear criteria of evaluation of merits, qualifications, and verified non-partisanship. A number of key issues hindered freedom of expression and limited voters' access to diverse information. For example, analytical reporting was limited due to self-censorship by state-level outlets who feared retribution from governors. Fines were imposed by the broadcast media regulator without due process. We are also seriously concerned journalists face attacks and with little consequences for the perpetrators. Therefore, and our fourth priority recommendation, we consider it essential to afford adequate protection to freedom of expression by developing a comprehensive operational framework underpinned by the skills and means for ensuring prompt investigation and prosecution of all types of attacks against media practitioners. Positively, the media raised voters' awareness, fact-checkers stood up against disinformation, and media outlets extensively covered the campaign, providing equitable exposure to both the APC and PDP. Disappointingly, politicians avoided answering merit-based questions during interviews and instead engaged in party infighting. While social media was an important tool for information exchange, campaigning and mobilization, misinformation was massively spread. Additionally, we noted legal provisions such as the Cyber Crime Act had the effect of encouraging self-censorship and we therefore consider amendment of the legislation is needed to safeguard freedom of expression. Detailed operational frameworks to strengthen inclusion are needed. For example, we found that persons with disabilities could not always access polling units and assistive devices were rarely available. Data on registration and, and voting by internally displaced persons was not published. Women's political participation in Nigeria is not in line with the country's international commitments and provision of equality. The number of women participating in the process evidences a worrisome trend of decline since 2007. Only one woman contested among 18 presidential candidates and there were no nominated female running mates. So while the 25th February elections were held on schedule, a lack of transparency and operational failures reduced trust in the process and challenged the right to vote. Voters assigned to new polling units had difficulties in identifying their correct polling unit and the conditions in almost half of polling units observed did not ensure the secrecy of the vote. In 16 states, the mission noted incidents of violent attacks on polling units and indeed on INEX staff and harassment of voters. The, count the counting procedures were negatively impacted by overall poor understanding, particularly in completing forms and chaotic and overcrowded conditions in collation centres observed. Key issues impacting the orderly conduct of elections on March the 18th included interference by party agents and a lack of adequate protection of the secrecy of the vote. 
The elections were impacted by outbreaks of fighting and thuggery, which led to a high number of cancellations of polling units and, regrettably, also fatalities. <clears throat> the introduction of the Bimodal Voter Accreditation System, or BVAS, and the INEC Results Reviewing Plat Portal, IREV, was widely seen as an important step to ensure the integrity and credibility of the elections, but lack of transparency before the polls and, notably, the severe, de severely delayed display of presidential result forms on the 25th of February, for which INEC failed to give a timely and comprehensive explanation, dashed the public trust in election technologies and in INEC. For both elections, INEC did not publish key relevant information, hampering transparency throughout the collation processes and the declaration of election results. For example, INEC failed to publish the manner of calculation of the declared winners turnouts, number of accredited voters, and the list of polling units where elections were cancelled, postponed, or not held. The absence of this information undermined the possibility for independent verification of the outcome and public trust. We consider it vital, and this is our final priority recommendation, to protect the free expression of the will of the voter and integrity of elections by establishing a robust, transparent, an easily verifiable results processing system with clear rules. These include uploading polling unit results from the polling unit only and in real time. At each level of collation, results forms to be uploaded in real time and all forms to be published in an easy trackable, easily trackable and scrapable database format. Actually, Nigeria, vis-a-vis -vis the Nigerian politician, what again, what kind of mark will you give them? Are we improving? Oh, we are stagnant. Thank you. If only it was as simple as giving a mark uh, to, um, to all of the stakeholders and how it's running. It, it, it is, of course, I, I completely understand your motivation to ask the question. And we have been, uh, we've engaged very much with INEC. Doors have been open to speak with us throughout the process from the very beginning, including yesterday. Um, and you know, I emphasize that we really hope that the such criticisms are here, and they are robust criticisms, are taken in the spirit in which they're given. And the spirit in which they're given is one of constructive criticism towards a shared goal, towards deepening Nigeria's democracy. Um, we t judge elections on the base of international criteria around inclusivity, credibility, transparency, and accountability. And throughout the report, we, we, we draw on these central, central principles. And it is for the people of Nigeria to conclude, based on what we found, uh, to make the mark, <laughs> I would say. Um, and in, I think you have a general question about the direction of travel of Nigerian democracy. And I think I made this point before in uh, when we launched our preliminary statement. And, you know, there is sort of democratic backsliding across the world. Um, in Europe, we are facing severe rule of law challenges from individual member states. Um, former EU country, UK, they're having problems. It has to be said, the United States had an incredibly complex election, <laughs> to put it mildly, uh, in 2020. So, uh, you know, this isn't unique to, uh, to Nigeria, to West Africa, to Africa. It is uh, an issue that, in my view, therefore underlines the need for further